Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. Just want to remind everyone to go out to our website, www.stogiegeeks.com. Check out all the latest reviews. A full listing of all the cigars that we've been smoking. Um, primarily, it has been Tim and I. Mark Jr. has joined the editorial crew, as it were. Um, <coughs> going to post uh, his stogies up there and uh, some reviews as well. We're working out all the technical details. Um, but you've got uh, at least one review, or is it three? Just one. I have one review that's up. I'm working on another one right okay. now. And okay. then you gave me some cigars. I saw three there. notifications come through our email box, but that was probably just you making multiple edits. Um, so we'll get that review up there and uh, look for more content coming fresh to the Stogie Geeks website. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Yes. So now, Mark Jr., your idea for a segment on the show was to do uh, a cooler doors. Sure. Absolutely. I think it's a, a very valid uh, way. Uh, so we've talked about the wine fridges. We've talked yes. about the large humidors. We've yes. talked about desktop humidors. Um, and I think the cooler door is a really great, affordable way for somebody to effectively store their cigars. I think it's a great temporary overflow mechanism. You can, cause yes, you can, it could be that. It could be a, tr- a segue from yeah. your desktops into yeah. a larger humidor. I think that and um, probably Tupperware, right, are two really easy ways. Like if, if you've got a really... Well, like, a cooler and a Tupperware are the exact same principle. You can assign this. Just yeah. smaller and, yeah. and a larger format. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think if you're running into overflow issues, you can go pick up a cooler pretty cheap and humidify it and store your cigars in there. And Cheaply. People can have and some effectively. Really, people very have, effectively. And people have good luck with these long-term storage, too. Uh, I had one for a long time. Um, and then I found a way to consolidate my humidor and get almost all of my stuff in there. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think very good way and effective way to store your cigars safely, uh, both temperature and humidity wise. So, so, so is there a particular kind of cooler you want to look for? Um, a new so, one, <laughs> no. a brand new one, not one that you, that's a very, very point. great <laughs> point. Actually. Yes. Yeah. A brand new one is most important. Second of all, I think most importantly is one that's hinged and that has a latch on it of some sort. Yeah. Because you don't want the top to come off. You don't want it to, you know. I, is, air, those, is air tight? Is that important? I would think so. I mean, a, a fully airtight's never been a huge concern of mine. I mean, some air getting in from the outside is not the end of the world, certainly. No, but it would certainly create a more stable environment inside. It's true. If it were airtight. Then if, if it's not airtight, temperature can change, fl- fluctuate a little bit, bit more. Yeah. And in, inside the cooler, which you probably wouldn't want. Right. Yeah. Right. And there's really not going to be any effective way to regulate temperature within these. It's so true. you're going to want it. You're going to want something, uh, I think, that's a little bit. I've heard of some people in uh, the warmer states uh, with their little desktop humidors and certainly a cooler too. This would apply, right? Uh, if it gets really hot, you have no way to regulate temperature. So you get some ice packs and you put them on the top and put a towel over them or something. Now you have to make sure the water obviously doesn't leak. You yeah, know, but you can get those ones the, that are like gel yeah, on the inside. Yeah. So there's and no water. Lay those involved. and lay a towel over the top of them too. Um, so it is a challenge with the cooler door is regulating temperature. Yeah. Um, now putting them in the, a basement, is that, that's not, I mean, is that going to help breed mold? Because it, that, Dampness. I guess is, it could if a if a tremendous amount of dampness got into it. Right. But if it's airtight, also it's going to keep that. I mean, out. is dampness just moisture? Really? Yeah. Of yeah. Course. It's yeah. just moisture, right? Yeah. So you want to be careful that if it is in a damper basement, because a cooler is not something you want to put in your living room, right? I mean, no, that's, no, that's no, the no. downside of a cooler, all right? Is it's a cooler, <laughs> you know, and you're gonna have to put it inside of your house. All your somewhere. friends are gonna walk in and be like, "Yo, yeah. sick! He's got beers." Yeah, they're all gonna be open up like, <laughs> "What the heck? It's cigars in here, man!" Um, How lame! Which yeah, they're cigar smokers, they'll be happy about. But yeah, um, yeah. So you're probably gonna be storing this in a place that's not visible, and I want to, you know, exercise caution as to where you place your cooler door in your house, right? Well, as you I would any you, you, humidor, really. Yeah, you don't want to put it in the closet. Mm. I think it needs to be in a room that is has air circulating around it in some way, shape, or fashion. My experience with that is I took one of my desktop humidors and I put it up inside of a cabinet. And I found that the humidity really rose, right? Because there was no air circulating, so your temperature is going to rise, your humidity is going to rise. 
I don't think you want to put it in a closet or a cabinet. It's going to turn into a fungus a yeah. mold breeding it's a mold. petri dish. Exactly. Well. Yeah. It's a science experiment at that point. Yeah. So you want to keep it out in, in a room somewhere. And, and I think the reason I mentioned the dampness is it's probably going to be in your basement somewhere because that's out of sight. Yeah. Um, or in your office or, you know, like under yeah, your somewhere hidden. Yeah. Somewhere hidden. I think the more air circular, circulating around it, the better. Because I think, like you said, the temperature is, is going to be more... Um, steady and yeah. stable with that type of uh, setup. So. Sure. So I think once you've chosen the one you want, right, I think the, the, a very important step is to clean it effectively. Get that the uh, plastic, the smell. plastic yeah. smell out of it. Um, the one that I've done in the past, I used a mild bleach solution, cleaned it, uh, let it settle in there for a little bit, completely rinsed it, let it set. The important is patience here. You don't yeah. want to just start throwing stuff in it, right? Yeah. So once you clean it out, then you need the bleach to get out of there too. Right. You know, I'm a huge uh, fan of baking soda. There you go. There you go. It's perfect. One or two. I mean, baking soda is cheap, man. You can get a whole like three of them. <laughs> just put them in the depending on the size of your cooler, right? Mm. The more you have in there, the quicker it's going to absorb the odors um, from whatever you've cleaned it with and whatever odors may remain inside of the cooler. I'll just fill my stuff with baking soda. Um, let it sit for 24 hours and usually it's it, or more and usually it's fine after that I do that we recommended that with the wine the wine adores as well right yeah is to let that bacon soda sit in there and then it's effective it's the reason why everybody puts them in their fridge you know and it's okay to even leave the bacon soda in there if you have cigars in it too I mean it does absorb some uh, humidity extra humidity as well which yep. cooler doors can have a tendency to really hold the humidity almost too well because it does make a very tight seal so sure it can kind of help balance. Of course, beads help you do that too. Well, the, yeah, we were gonna get. I'm yeah, sure we'll talk about how to, to humidify. It. It. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of the baking soda um, in terms of removing smell. It removing smell. Yeah, and even absorbing some extra moisture too. Sure. So it makes. And then you've sense. got plenty to put in all your refrigerators as well. Sure. So, and it's cheap. It's like a dollar twenty nine at the local store. Mm. So, so you you wouldn't keep the baking soda in the cooler door. There have been times when I did. Yeah. To absorb, I mean, and that's just because I was having issues, right? Yeah. So sometimes I would. Right. But hopefully if you stay on top of it, you won't yeah. get down yeah. there. Uh, I also experienced an issue, but that was because I had gotten a larger humidor and I was not paying the attention to it as I should yeah. have because I was paying attention more to the larger humidor. Well, I I had an, ele an electronic humidification device inside of the cooler door. It was oh, a big, nice. cool it was a hundred and... 180 quart cooler. It was one of the gigantic ones. Like, yeah. if it was longer, it could be a coffin. That's like the how, Tailgate Express? It's huge. Gigantic. Like, if you stood it out, like, tall, like lengthwise, it was, like, four feet tall. I think it's yeah. 180 quart. Yeah, it was big. So I had an electronic humidification system in there. And I think that just blows too much um, moisture inside of the system. My other problem with that is that mold had developed in the green foam that they use inside of those electronic humidification devices. So it's essentially blowing mold inside of, uh, inside of the, uh, cooler door. Not good. Nasty. No, Not good. that's yeah. Worst case scenario. <laughs> I, I think our recommendation holds true with any humid, uh, humidor is to use beads. I love them. Yeah. Uh, Hartfeld Industries, uh, if you Google Hartfeld Industries, they have the beads at a reasonable price. You can buy them in multiple formats. You can buy yep. them in the, the rectangular bricks. You can buy them in the circle hockey pucks. You yep. can buy them in these like cylindrical containers. Um, I like to buy them in bulk. Buy them by the pound. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And then just throw them in an open Tupperware and throw them in whatever you need them to do. And they are gonna, going to be extremely effective all the time. I bought the uh, the socks that uh, they sell. The sacks, yeah. yeah the, the sacks um, that tie off at one end and are kind of like a mesh material. They were an extra dollar or two or whatever. And I find beads like to have, uh, to be exposed to the environment all the way around. So if you're going to put them in Tupperware, make sure you poke holes in the whole thing. Yeah. But I find I have a lot better luck with the actual. Fair enough. Um socks or sacks itself yeah uh, just being in the human or i've always put them in the people use pantyhose the bottom people pantyhose use, would be perfect pantyhose people use uh pantyhose with some forms of kitty litter i guess does the same thing as beads really yeah I, i'm saying don't be that cheap go by the beads. but it's not they're not that expensive but the kitty litter is also not going to release moisture in in a dry environment either so 
You want the beads. The beads yeah, do both. The they, they absorb yeah. and emit humidity. I, I've so. been skeptical of the kitty litter. And the kitty litter would act like baking soda, too. It would Wouldn't it smell, too? Well, no, it would, it would, apparently there's, and I don't know, maybe we'll get email from listeners, but apparently there are certain yeah. brands of kitty litter that essentially act as a two-way system. I believe some of them act as a two-way system the same way that beads do. Uh, I don't know if I how much I believe that, but people say they've used it with great success and all the more power to you if that's what you got going on. I've also heard somebody say salt. So uh, as some of you may know, and most of it, I would assume most of you do, you can salt test your hygrometers when you yeah. buy them yeah. by making a salt slushy, and it always emits at 70%. So you can uh, judge how... You can calibrate your, your hygrometer to what it's reading when it's in an enclosed environment with that salt slushy. Right. Now, uh, of someone I, I think would certainly know cigars, uh, a, a local rep for Tatuaje told me that in his humidors, he uses a salt slushy. Now, he keeps his humidors at a higher high, uh, relative humidity than I like. I don't like to keep mine at 70. I like no, mine at 65. Either. I yeah, but you could 60. operate at seventy. I mean, it's all personal taste. I tell you what, though. I mean, along the lines of humidor maintenance, um, to me, seventy's always been too high. And I actually pulled a couple of cigars from my humidor recently that uh, had mold growing out of the foot. Well, that's the big issue. If you uh, if you go up too high in humidity, yeah. every degree you go up higher in humidity, you you increase your probability of getting mold. Yeah, so if you're at and seventies really skirting with the hot with the high end. So if you go, but there's a, a difference. I mean, some mold on the outside of your cigars you can wipe off, and they'll be totally fine. When it comes out of the foot, <laughs> it's screwed. There's mold on the inside of your cigar, and to me, I mean, I've got a lot of cigars in there, but I'm almost thinking that there was the beginnings of mold in some of the cigars I acquired at some time. And they've gone through either where I got them from or my own environment, where it's kind of bred that a little bit and fed it and then there's nothing you can do like eventually it'll just spend enough time in the humidor where the mold will just pop through on the foot so there's a very 0.05 percent cigars in my in my humidor that i just inevitably have to pull out because of mold and a lot of that's my mistake they've been in my previous humidors that i made some mistakes in which i hope our listeners don't make those same mistakes which is why we talk about it on the show yeah right? of course of course yeah. Yeah, so beads are definitely for humidification the way to go. Yep. Uh, store in a, a cool, semi-dry place. Um, I think a, another um, tip that I I didn't do and I wish I had was uh, get... So on Cigar Pass, there's a gentleman, uh, for those of you who are members of Cigar Pass, a gentleman who makes wine and door shelves, but he'll instead of making shelves, he'll make trays for yeah. you. And you put those in your, in your uh, cooler... But so that it'll, you know, separate your cigars a little bit. It'll, ge- you know, generate a little bit more airflow between them. Um, because if you just densely pack your cigars in there, it doesn't matter how good your humidification is. doesn't matter how expensive, a hum- my most expensive humidor that we talked about on a previous show, I packed my top shelf way too much and I, I started getting mold and beetles in the top shelf. Just- or uh, conversely, they could dry out too because yeah, they could. They're ju- you're just not getting the circulation that it needs, yeah. right? I've never had a problem with drying out, though. I mean, that's why I keep my humidors now between... Well, we live in New England. I mean, it's let's true. be serious. But. I mean, I keep them between 63 and 65 now. Um, I try and keep them on the lower end of 60. I keep them well. on, the, on the lower end. Uh, well, I set my humidification, and I would buy beads that keep it on that lower end, because what I'm finding is, as I add and remove cigars, and you get a good amount of cigars inside of a humidor they act as a humidification device themselves and oh yeah you don't want your you don't want it to be you yeah. don't want to have this huge humidor and then only right. have it like 20 percent locked up yeah but even if it is pretty full i mean i, I guess what i'm saying is the cigars are going to act as a humidification device so my right. humidification systems don't need to be set very high to keep my cigars humidified sure that's what i'm finding i'm finding i'm, I'm cranking them down to 60 both mine are set down like 64 you know, and I've got a mixture of beads that go from 65 and a couple of pounds I bought were 70, just as compensation. But I'm finding that more often than not, my humidity will be higher than I want it. So that's that's a New England problem. Yeah, uh, it was. It has been very humid since. I don't know spring. if we have any listeners in Arizona, but you know, yeah. they, they wouldn't be dealing with that's that. That's true. That's yeah. true. 
They'd be fighting the opposite battle. Right, They'd be fighting right. ways to find the humidity into their yeah. cigars all the time. So. Here in New England, though. We're always fighting the dehumidification yeah, battle. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we're going to be going into winter, so I'm curious to see how well my uh, how well like the changes I've made for like spring and summer, even fall. It was humid through the fall here too. I'm um, curious to see how that holds out through the winter. Like I'm really hesitant to start trying to bring up humidity in my humidors as we go through winter. Well, I'm, don't. I'm I nervous. Mean, I'm nervous about just stay, yeah because right? I think more humid is worse than dry. Oh, it's way worse. Yeah. Well, don't you have an automatic system that would adjust for I that? Do. So I do. I do. You wouldn't really have to adjust. These autom- auto systems don't dehumidify. Right. That's the problem. That's the problem. And I've got some beads in that. So what I did was in my right, but in my larger cabinet, I took a half a pound of beads and I stuck it in the top drawer for going to in- help regulate humidity yeah. in that top part of it. Which is weird to have that problem in the top of the humidor, which is why I wasn't worried about it. But I think. A good tip, especially if you're building a cooler door, is to not overfill. There's, you're going to find that there's a max, and you're going to be tempted to fill it more. Don't overfill. And I think that's the problem. That's in, a good lesson with in, any humidor, though. The problem in both my big cabinets. I mean, they're both getting, you know. And it's not that they can't, I don't think, handle the number of cigars I'm putting in. It's just poor management on my part, you know. Like, if you just throw stuff in there, and you're blocking the ways the air can circulate, and you're just being lazy like I was, and throwing cigars all on the top shelf... Um, and then, uh, you know, humidity is spiking when you have room in the rest of your humidor, if you spend some time to manage it, I just, I just spend went, the time to manage it in your cooler doors. You know, I just did a massive reorganization. Mm. I had, the, I took everything out and put it back in. You need to do that every once a in a while. Tetris. Well, and it is like Tetris and it's also, I think a good, whether you have a cooler door or not to look at your cigars. Every once yeah, in a while. And see how healthy Check to see they how are. they're doing. Make sure there's no mold growing on them. Make sure there's no beetles. Make sure they're still um, a little spongy, right? Make sure they're not drying out kind of thing. Yeah, because the thing is, is if you do that, then you can catch a problem in its infancy. Yes. And that's the time to catch it. Right. Mold and bugs, you wait too long and you can be in a world of hurt. Yeah. You, at all the time, money, effort, love that you've put into building your collection can yeah. be gone. Yeah. Um, do you have other tips for a cooler door? Do you? So what do you suggest? So you said trays. So, what else do you put cigars in in the cooler door? Ziploc bags. Yeah, Ziploc, Ziploc bags, bags are for very sure. effective. Yeah. Um, I think the tray would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but I mean, we are talking about yeah. the cooler at this point. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Uh, no one's going to see inside the cooler. Yeah, except, except for you. you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I the think the bags great. are nice. The Ziploc bags, I think add to being able to regulate humid, uh, humidity in, cause they're going to kind of keep out and keep in humidity. Sure. So not just that. I think if you, you know, if you're going to have, it depends on what you're using your cooler for, but you know, obviously in any case, the more Ziploc bags you use or the more that you keep your cigars in boxes, or cellophane wrapped, wrapped in cellophane or you know you don't open the box you keep it sealed you're reducing your risk of cross Ooh. contamination so if you have That's a good point as well know, if yeah. you have if you have like one batch of cigars that have mold well if you have them all in ziploc bags there'll be that one ziploc yeah, bag with right. mold and then you'll save the rest of your uh you know y- y- your other um investments your your other cigar collect your other parts of your cigar collection so I mean, That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, pretty straightforward, I think. I agree. But yeah, if you don't like Ziploc bags, if you have a regular humidor and you don't think Ziploc bags are aesthetically pleasing, I would just say, you know, you have to grow your self-discipline a little bit better. And, and when you buy a box, you know, buy a couple of, you know, uh, uh, regular, you know, of those sticks out in the open. So grab a box and grab two sticks and just don't open that box. And, you know, if you know you're going to age it, then don't open it. And that way you can kind of protect the, that box of cigars, essentially. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of cellophane. I don't ever take my cigars out. I, I, I went through a phase where, I don't know, I read online and I got overly uh, enthusiastic about taking the cellophane off all my cigars. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I tell you what, since I've done that, uh, use me as a guinea pig, right? You're a lot more susceptible to temperature humidity changes that would adversely affect your cigars. 
You're also uh, at a higher risk if you drop a cigar or scrape it on something uh, to damage it without the cellophane. Well, that's why people put them on them in the yeah. first place is for when they're going yeah. from them to you. Mm-hmm. They're they're right. more safe that way. <clears throat> cellophane. Then yeah, and can't recommend it. Just it may, it may take right. them longer to age. Sorry, it's worth it. If you overhumidify your cigars, the cellophane will protect it from the foot cracking. Yes, yes. That thing, you know, that and the band. You know, a lot of cigars have that band now. Yeah. That, you know, it protects the foot from cracking when it well, blows up. Well, you know, up. and Halloween's a good example of that. When I, you know, I stuck cigars in my vest and I was walking around, I could only choose ones that had cellophane or, in, or were in a tube, right? If you're going to take a cigar and stuff it in your pocket, right, it has to have cellophane on it. Yeah, yeah. And always make sure the foot's sticking up. Don't don't put. I would never put the foot down in in your uh, in your pocket. I think you'll really. Yeah, I think you would break it. Very. I've done it before. Like if you if you keep the the foot up, because the foot, I in my opinion is the is most, more susceptible. Most, yeah, it's I most see likely to be be broken. So you should kind of leave that free flowing up on top, rather than jamming it into your uh, pocket or when you're rustling around. It's it's you know yeah. grinding against your uh, your pocket. How's everyone's EP, Carrillo, Coraline, and Cantos? Very good. I finished mine. It was good. I enjoyed it. I got a couple of like, uh, like blasts of this like unique, uh, almost sweet kind of flavor that came through. It was a definitely different kind of flavor in the final. It changed third. up in the second yeah. half for me. The yeah. sweetness, yeah. It got it went away from that like citrus sweetness to like a more yes, of a, like the citrus a, sweetness definitely subsided. Yeah, I picked up a, a toastiness a, almost. Yeah, I picked up a, a, a citrus, but I. have Found if I smack my lips a little bit, you, yeah. There's definitely a coffee undertone throughout the entire cigar that I get. Like when you, you know, not not dark. No, yeah. But very like very light, light, light sense yeah. of coffee going throughout the cigar. I'd buy that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm buying what you're selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was unable to identify what that was, but mm. yeah. I pick up coffee. Good insight from Ben. Yeah, yeah from Ben over here. I like that. Oh, there goes the ash. <laughs> it didn't go on me, though, which is kind of interesting. So uh, to close this segment out. Yes. Uh, Cigar Pass has a really great link uh, that we'll throw a link up for it on how to start your own Kulador. So if, if you want to get a second reference, uh, somebody took a tremendous amount of time and gave very good advice on it. So uh, check that out, too. Excellent. So uh, we're to the contest portion here. We need to come up with something. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we need to come up with a contest. How about uh, something for Thanksgiving? Something. Okay. Uh, Do it. Ben. Should you make it happen? Drop a frozen turkey in the deep no, fryer. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, how about uh, do a pairing? Give me a Thanksgiving, give a Thanksgiving pairing. Like, tell me what you're having. It could be an appetizer, it could be your Thanksgiving dessert, it could be what's going to be on your plate. I'll and do then, one better. Okay. Okay. Your favorite Thanksgiving side dish, whichever one makes my mouth water the most, gets <laughs> <my business>. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's it. <sighs> Okay, well, my, I mean, your, so what was this for again? For a 2005 Opus. Well, uh, this is coming from Mark's collection, so we got we to gotta go with Mark's suggestion yeah. for a contest, which is... I, I also love to cook, so if you can include the recipe... Yeah. Done. Your favorite you Thanksgiving side dish, whichever one Mark Jr. decides to pick, is gets the um, yeah. Opus X... Uh, what size was that? Uh, five and a quarter by 52. Uh, from 2005. I mean, if, yeah. if your favorite side dish. If there's yeah. any holiday that you smoke cigars, I mean, it's Thanksgiving. 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 After a big Thanksgiving meal, man, I just you you yep. want a cigar. Fourth July, but definitely Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Pour, pour a good a good good whiskey uh, varietal. <laughs> yeah. And, or uh, beer. I like I like beer with Thanksgiving uh, dinner. I'm not a big wine person, so I'll typically do the beer with. Yeah, Thanksgiving. I drink water or soda with my meal, and then afterwards I just get filthy with the whiskey <laughs> every year. <laughs> Every year I work up a good, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the what's the chemical in turkey that makes me want to sleep? Tryptophan. Tryptophan. Yeah. yeah, I work up a good tryptophan buzz, and then I lather on some <laughs> some, some alcohol <laughs> buzz, and then it's nap time. Uh, well, thanks everyone for listening, and we will see all of you on the next episode of the Stogie Geek Show. Join CRA. 
Yes, don't forget to join CRA. And Visit join your website. forums. It's a, a really great way Cigar to... Cigar Pass uh, and BOTL seem to be the ones that we gravitate towards. Absolutely, so. and it's a good way to meet people, learn a lot, and uh, do Get it. Get cigars in the process. Do it. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>